Welcome back to the big board. Here we go. Looking at EFS, the Eastern Front System, Barbarossa, the AGC module, Army Group Center from GMT, published. And you know what? Why don't you just go look the rest of that up yourself? I uh, <clears throat> had a couple of interesting comments today on Facebook in the Eastern Front War Games group where I was posting a series of pictures about the game and every, pic the, every picture above the particular post and every picture below the particular post had the game name and the publisher and the module. And the, the person decided that the one picture that didn't have it, you know, they decided they needed to ask me what game it was. Really guys, come on, give me a fucking break. All right, enough of that. Let's look at turn four. End of the German turn, chaos and mayhem reign everywhere. And as you can probably see, there are no cohesive, straight, uh, interlocking, adjacent units in lines. It's mayhem. And in my mind, while this may cause lots of uh, upset OCD feelings and you know, triggers for OCD reactions. The, uh, this is how I see warfare really evolving, particularly at this scale. We're talking about two day turns. We're talking about, you know, we've got regiments here and battalions and whatnot. And I, I, I don't see at this scale, uh, straight lines like in Proud Monster where we've got divisions, you know, one division after another and one core after another as the case may be, you know, in a, in a consistent line from Leningrad to friggin' Rostov, right? <clears throat> now here we're dealing with the area just to the, e, uh, to the west of Minsk and we've got the border here somewhere. Here, uh, Lithuania, East Poland. So we're now into East Poland and we, we've just crossed the Belarus uh, border on the, on the right-hand side of the screen there. And it's June 28, 29 is the, uh, is the time frame. So let's, let's start westward. Let's have a look over here, carefully placing, there we go. So this, this little zone here, We've got a HQ out of supply, some regular units here. This dude is going to be okay. He's going to be in supply next turn, but we had to take into account that he can only move. <clears throat> we can, he can only move a couple of movement points uh, because of this out of supply marker that he acquired at the beginning of the turn. The, all of these units are out of supply. You can see this marker here. I'll try and zoom in a little bit there for you without moving anything else below me. I don't know if I can do that effectively. Hang on one sec. There we go. Now here, I've just started moving the Soviets this turn and uh, for this turn. And what I decided to do was, uh, let's see if we can force this dude to retreat. <coughs> And uh, do a declared attack. Oh, I'm going to have to do a soak off attack here, aren't I? So you know what we'll do? We'll do this. We'll turn this guy this way. We have to. We have to attack every unit we're adjacent to, or that we're in any soak off. So we'll have to do one attack going that direction. And this is kind of an important little area, actually, because oh, you can't see. There we go. Someone's going to have to track this hex here. This is two VPs. <clears throat> and the last person to control that hex were in fact the Germans now. But if the Soviets are able to put the front, they're not going to be able to push this guy back. Hmm, this has me thinking. It might be more valuable to try to attack here. So rather than going from here, I could go one through, no, I can't go through to there because I only have three movement points. That's two, 
plus one for the Zoc. And these guys are here, it'd be one, two, three, four. So they, none of them can make it. Okay, that's why I did that. So I'm gonna do a soak off here. Nothing good's gonna come of that. So we're still not gonna get into this hex, but I'm hoping to force a retreat in some way, shape or form here that will allow us to, at the beginning of the next turn, be in, uh, in supply and maybe make a run for it. And if we can make a run for it, zooming out, then that's going to impact supply lines. If I can cut here or here even, even for a turn or two, slows everything down for, for the Germans. And, and I'll show you why that's important in a second. So that, that's pretty cool. And if I'm talking uh, kind of off tone or I don't want to say off key, but I, I've been at concerts for the last two days and I have a buzzing in my ears from the loudness of the music. So I can't really hear myself talking correctly. So I don't know if I'm talking loud or soft at the moment. And, I, and it all sounds very different to me. Anyway, so central area here, very interesting situation. Over on the far left, far western side of the board, we've got a handful of units that are isolated. And uh, at the end of the turn, all of those that are adjacent to an enemy, to an Axis unit, are going to have to roll for survival or basically, you know, uh, some sort of attrition roll, right? Down here... Further down, where are we here? I had a full division of armor down here trying to clear the way, which we did, but we're now down to just a couple of uh, mechanized units. In fact, this guy's going to probably retreat back to here. He's got the mech phase to do his motorized phase to do that. Where are we? Right here, this guy. <clears throat> Pinsker's worth two VPs. So the Germans, uh, the Axis forces, had a full uh, regiment of cav and a full division. They kind of beat up on the forces that were down here. The division had subsequently left. It was the uh, 10th Panzer, I think it was. And we're bringing an infantry division in here to try and clear out this particular area and capture these three bridges before turn 10 when they can start blowing bridges. Uh, we'd like to capture that intact so they don't have to send an engineering unit down there. Similarly, over here, same sort of thing. We want to clean out this little guy here. Got to get him off this map anyway. So let's 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 make that happen. Uh, ideally, by encirclement and attrition. But if we have to, we'll attack. So we've kept a few forces back here to try and isolate these guys and and get rid of them over time. We've got five or six turns to take care of that. And we'll get rid of all this the next turn or two, probably, I would imagine, as the German player. Now, uh, subsequently, you know, this turn for the Germans was the roughest turn. We, we kind of avoided this area here. Pretty tough units. Well, there were, I mean, I just realized I had a, a wide open road here that the Germans ignored and missed that the Soviets have subsequently plugged, but only with a one factor unit. I will probably try and reinforce that. But weak here, strong, strong. Wherever I choose to bring one or two divisions in a stack of independents, like here's the Grosse Deutschland unit, and I think the Panzer Lear is here as well. Uh, if I bring those forces to bear and bring some air, I will be able to knock out these guys. But we run the risk of, of taking damage there. And I'm trying to mitigate step losses as much as possible. So we, I told you we had this 10th division down, down here. He's rotated around. He is now beginning to reinforce this attack, which it's kind of stalled out here near Timkovic, Timkovici. Uh, <coughs> the Germans, uh, the Soviets got uh, two airborne regiments down there, or brigades, I should say down into this area right here. And they really did a good job. Uh, turn four, they could do reaction movement. So they react, mo reaction moved into here, one, two. You don't pay the plus one for entering a zone of control in uh, reaction movement. So we reinforced this hex, which had a one defense. And I only had, as the Germans, I only had uh, five, I think, three. Six, it was six to, it was gonna be a six to one attack, became a six to three attack, made that a three to one. 
versus a six to one. We rolled really badly, rolled a nine on that bad boy. And even with the air, because uh, it was an un, uh, no attack support, no attack supply provided, so we had to add two to the die roll. I used air that subtracted two from the die roll, and then we had to add one back for the strong, the strong point, right? So nasty uh, situation, lost two steps here. First big combat loss in exchange for one step loss here. An attack into this hex was successful. They managed to move out uh, and exploit out to there. That's three movement points. It's two to there, three here. Uh, so that's as far as they could go. But I uh, probably have a recon unit that could go another hex if they wanted to, but they're fine. We've got a zone of control over here. So that's gonna slow these guys down. Um, you know, ideally if I put a unit here, had to put a unit here, next supply uh, discussion that would they would have been under emergency supply rules doesn't change combat values or anything like that so neither here nor there being positioned here allows me as a stack to lunge up towards this dude or go around and head up this way or uh, come in here behind these guys and and try and beat snot out of them that way well so that's all well and good now up in the north. The northern advance has been pretty interesting. Taking Vilnius, Vilnius early, advancing down this road, and realizing that counting seven hexes back to here, then 21 hexes to a supply point, we can use for general supply, we can use the uh, this borderline just here that separates army group north and, and center. We can use that for general supply. So I can actually be in supply here. And I had these guys out of supply last turn, so that was a mistake. But nevertheless, it allowed these guys a chance to catch up. And I brought, uh, kept, have kept pushing the rest of these motorized divisions. And another armored division that's, uh, I think that's 12th. Yeah, it's 12th division there, so. They crank it along. We've got a few other motorized and armored forces coming this way as well. Uh, we're trying to threaten this uh, VP hex here just to keep the Soviets honest so they don't collapse onto Minsk. But as you can see, the defense here was very thin. I, I literally had, I don't know, three defense points there and there were no units I could really use this guy just, I just put him here. That's going to force a soak off attack. Uh, if, if, if there is one, Th these guys will probably overrun this dude. This turn on a, on a six to one. Yep. So now these guys are going to have to overrun here. Yeah. With 10 to two is five to one. That's minimum. Uh, they're going to have to go out like this. So it's buying a little bit of time, <coughs> but not a lot. And I've got to work out how to get some reinforcements up into this hex. So these uh, these cab guys, for instance, they can move half movement this turn. They'll probably, by the time the turn is over, they will have made it into or adjacent to Minsk, <coughs> Minsk to make it uh, a little more defensible. I can move this artillery and this artillery, ho hopefully, and uh, consolidate them to provide some support uh, for the defense of the city. I don't know if the, the, these guys have an engineering. Oh, they do, okay, so they have an engineering unit. Yeah, so they're in pretty good shape. They could take the higher risk attack next turn if they really wanted to, but uh, I think they'll be able to bring these folks in as well. And, and Minsk looks like it might fall turn five, which would be the first week of July, second and third, I think. So that's pretty interesting, uh, you know, especially by the time we start pushing all this stuff up in here. And then of course the rest of the map, you know, and this is, wow, this is kind of a long video, I'm sorry about this, but the rest of the, uh, the rest of the map, we're, we're just bringing stuff on the board. We're not able to use rail. We're not able to use strategic movement. These guys are all moving incredibly slowly, right? They're, uh, they're, they're coming on the board and moving four movement points. No road movement bonus. 
for the first three turns. It's a beat down for the Soviets and, and the losses, as you can see over here, are substantial. Now, the piles on the left are just those Ur battalions or divisions or regiments or whatever they are. And then you've got a uh, swag of other things. So, so we've lost one, one VP. We're about to lose a second VP. We've also lost uh, four VPs for HQs. And then a five or six VPs for the uh, location, ac location acquisition. All right. So that's a bit of a wrap. Midway through turn four, we're about to wrap up the motorized portion of the turn. I can move these last two guys, the last two fellas I can uh, do anything with. And so we'll see what happens. So thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.